have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hammond. Happy Christopher Street Liberation Day uh, month. <laughs> Hello, Andy. I'm Ann Northrup, and it is Pride Month. And we start off with what could sound like sad news, but is really someone we want to value and, and celebrate, uh, Kay Lahusen a lesbian activist since the 1950s and a true pioneer, uh, right up until the end. She just died at the age of 91. We're gonna look back at her remarkable life and contributions. She was a pistol and, and such a treasure. And I think it's entirely appropriate that we begin Pride Month celebrating the life of someone who was so fundamentally important and such a great person. Because uh, that history has been lost to a lot of people. So I feel privileged uh, to be able to talk about her today. Uh, we also will talk about a couple of other people we lost. Uh, Maryland transgender leader Sharon Brackett, who died at 59, and white party empresario Jeffrey Sanker, who died at 65. Biden uh, proclaimed lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer Pride Month. Those were the words that were used, citing an extraordinary percentage of LGBTQ appointments in his administration. I'd like to find out how many times an official White House statement has used the word queer in a supportive way. <laughs> Uh, and U.S. embassies at the behest of the White House are freely flying rainbow flags, including in a place where the head of state opposes LGBTQ and women's equality. That could be so many places, but we'll <laughs> tell you. Uh, an LGBTQ woman uh, has led the White House press conference for the very first time. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's any more substance to it than there usually is with those things, but it, she looked uh, great. A lot more substance than you got in the last administration. Well, uh, that's a longer conversation. Uh, Florida has joined the red state rush to ban trans girls from girls sports. Yeah. Uh, more ongoing controversy over armed uniform police officers in pride parades. And Russia, to the surprise of no one, has nixed a Disney Pixar film with a gay theme. But Kay Lahusen, a name we want you all to remember. Kay was, uh, has, has been uh, designated as the first out photojournalist uh, taking pictures of the movement. Uh, starting in the, I guess, the early 1960s. There she is more recently with uh, uh, holding a picture of her longtime partner, Barbara Giddings, and that's a picture of Barbara marching. They were together for 46 years before Barbara's death. Uh, they met and became partners in 1961. They worked publishing the latter lesbian magazine together. Uh, uh, there it is before they uh, were working on it. Uh, let's take it a little slower on these pictures because we want to talk about the history. Let's go, let's go back to the first picture of, of, uh, of Kay uh, holding the picture of Barbara Giddings because they were together forever. Uh, Barbara died some years ago. Um, 2007. But they met in the Daughters of Belitis. Uh, they, they, they did things like organized protests at the National Council of Churches at the Pentagon. This is all before before Stonewall. Yes, long before Stonewall. And uh, it's so sad to me that people forget that history. Uh, I, you know, we could go back to uh, 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 thousands of years to homosexual behavior and, and lifestyles, as they say. Uh, to think that the movement started in 1969 is ridiculous. But uh, these people in particular were out there in the 60s and the 50s demonstrating. And their first demonstration uh, was at the White House. They decided to- uh, Well, that's at Independence Hall in yeah. 65 in July. 
Uh, but they were they were doing a very similar picket at the White House, and then they decided to move to Independence Hall for July fourth annual Remembrance uh, Day pickets. And the picture that's on the screen now is of uh, Barbara Giddings there in the front and Randy Wicker. And we're going to talk about uh, Kay's relationship with with him as a co-author later. But, uh, you know, she took pictures of lesbians and persuaded them to put themselves on the cover of the ladder magazine, which used to just have drawings on the cover because people didn't want to be seen. And this is in 1966. And that's a picture of Ernestine Eckstein, a black lesbian activist who picketed the White House for gay rights in 1965. So these uh, pickets were uh, unique and revolutionary. You may think they look a little uh, white bread with their uh, the women in dresses and the men in suits. That was a very deliberate choice that they made to try to seduce the public into appreciating us and our issues. Uh, and we have a wonderful film made by another great activist and documentarian, Lily Vincennes, who is still with us, I'm happy to say. Uh, and she made this film of uh, 1965. Uh, 68. 68 picket at in Stonewall. before Stonewall at Independence Hall in Philadelphia. And this is a film narrated by Kay Lehusen. So let's take a look at that. Well, my name is Kay, last name Lehusen. And I lived in Philadelphia much of my life with Barbara. And we were together 46 years. There was the usual 4th of July parade. Then all the tourists that had assembled to watch the big Philadelphia 4th of July parade sort of went home. <laughs> and not many people were left to see us. <laughs> we didn't come on the scene until about 4 o'clock or something. And other people, you know, they'd been standing in the hot sun and they had to go to the bathroom, they had to uh, get something to eat. You know, they were fed, fed up with their 4th of July. So we, we got out there very bravely, but hardly anybody was watching. That's me. First class citizenship for homosexuals I was carrying. That's Craig Rodwell launched the first bookstore, gay bookstore, that wasn't just a porn shop, in uh, the Oscar Wilde shop in New York. You know, honestly, the people who came down from New York on the bus, which was assembled by Craig Rodwell, mm -hmm. were not so much movement people, but we said it was important to have numbers. homosexual human beings and homosexual American citizens. Everybody always remembers the first word in both of those phrases, homosexual. Very convenient there I go, in the white oh, dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was Peter Ogren, New York Mattachine affiliate, I guess. Me in front of him or whatever. Any minority or any group, any classification. I don't care whether it's foreigners or, or what have you. Barbara. You come together in one group. You have to take these individuals. Whatever the Founding Fathers envisioned as the rights and privileges of our citizens, we wanted for ourselves as well as the general citizenry. That was a passerby who stuck out his tongue at us. Now, some of the watchers we assumed were FBI. Say that again, I didn't hear it. If the homosexual had the visibility, the Negro does. In other words, if you, you knew the people were homosexual. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. There would be 15 million unemployed homosexuals. That was someone who didn't want to march but didn't mind holding out a string. 
because if you don't bring things down, the open Somebody had to get out and show their face in public and proclaim things and be aggressive. We are seeking for recognition, equality. We are seeking our human dignity, our equality, and our acceptance as the That's Frank Talk. He always handled press, and therefore he often doesn't appear in the picket line. On account of my homosexuality, I have lived for uh, eight months on 20 cents worth of food a day when I had the 20 cents. This was at a time when people in my profession were in higher demand than they had been in all of human history. And I could not get a job specifically because of homosexuality. And I am not alone. I know many people who have done the same. I've seen careers ruined, uh, lives destroyed for no other reason. These were people with a great deal to offer to society, simply because society uh, is prejudiced against them and would not allow them... We knew we were doing up. something important. We didn't know how important it might be. Because you never know when you're in the midst of making history, you can't get a, a good fix on how important it may be ultimately. I always felt that they were just culture bound and that we were right and they were wrong. <laughs> I mean, that's what you have to believe when you go against the current mores. I'm pretty sure that was Nancy Garden famous for books for uh, kids. Oh, that's Eva Freund. Very radical for her time. She told Barbara she was going to wear her I radical garb, her, her boots and everything to the picket. And Barbara said to her, Eva, I wouldn't do that if I were you because they won't uh, believe your message. And so she didn't. She put on a dress. <laughs> Barbara was very persuasive. Schools will throw him out or not accept him at any level at all. What I want to do. Right. This is all they're asking. Just that very same right not to be interfered with what they want to do in private. You will find, as in this country with most groups, Frank was always very nervous about what was going to transpire. It wasn't so much that we thought anybody would throw a rock at this, but um, people would make remarks like uh, they're all a bunch of actors, or one father said to his kids, hold your noses, it smells here, things like that. But you know, picketing was sort of on the wane by the time um, we finished our stint of the reminder pickets. Their day had passed, that something else bigger would come along, and it did. It was very, very prescient of her to uh, make that note that something different came along, meaning the Stonewall Rebellion, uh, riots at Cooper's Donuts, uh, Compton's Cafe, an angrier uh, movement with more self-esteem about uh, getting angry. So the last time they had their picket line in Philadelphia, it was right after the Stonewall Rebellion. And uh, uh, in 1969, we finally have a picture of Kay on the picket line herself, not taking the picture, obviously, uh, it, there. There she is, homosexual Americans, unrecognized minority. And that was with the sign that she was carrying. Um, now, also in 1972, we're going chronologically here, uh, she was very involved in lobbying the American Psychiatric Association to get rid of homosexuality as a mental illness. That was a successful campaign to get us out of the index of mental disorders. Huge breakthrough. And that was the whole thing where they had a, a gay psychiatrist who disguised himself with a mask uh, to testify to his fellow psychiatrists that there were gay people in the profession, but he couldn't reveal himself. But that campaign won us uh, uh, sanction from psychiatry. And that same year, uh, she and Randy Wicker came out with a book called The Gay Crusaders. She, she used the name Kay Tobin there as a, a handle, basically, uh, 
at that time. And uh, this was, I remember this book from my childhood. I, in 1972, I'm in, I'm just in college at the point. And to have this account of early gay, act, gay and lesbian activists was uh, just eye-opening. And as Randy says, his name's on there simply because the publisher wanted a man's name in addition to a woman's name. And he says he wrote maybe one paragraph of the book. Okay. It's all Kay. And so you get to the mid 70s. We have a picture of Barbara and Kay at a party in the mid 70s. Nice middle aged couple by that by that time. <laughs> doing great work. By the way, Kay was involved in New York with the uh, founding of the Gay Activist Alliance, which was mostly men. But uh, she was there and she was right there at the founding. And she and Barbara are buried together in the Congressional Cemetery. I'm not sure how they end up there, but they they did. And there is a bench uh, that was carved with their names and dates uh, on it. Uh, and it's a lovely idea to put them together in the cemetery there. But shortly before her death, she was in a nursing home in Pennsylvania, just outside Philadelphia. And Eric Marcus, the historian, author of Making Gay History, both the book and the podcast, went down to interview her one day and found her at uh, lunch uh, with her, some of her fellow uh, residents of the home. She had created a gay table at the nursing home, completely She's out people. She's all the way over on the right. I hope you can see that on the picture. Yes. Uh, and Eric, you can see standing in the back uh, with his hands on someone's shoulders. Uh, but uh, Kay just was an activist till the end, uh, organizing in her nursing home uh, outside Philadelphia. Marcia Gallo, who was the author of Different Daughters, A History of the Daughters of Politis and the Rise of the Lesbian Rights Movement, Paul Kay, one of the key foundational organizers and chroniclers of the LGBTQ movement from the 1960s on. Um, early in her life, I mean, she realized who she was early on. She had a crush on Katharine Hepburn. Uh, like Frank Kameny, she decided, quote, I was right and the world was wrong and there couldn't be anything wrong with this kind of love. People who came to that realization you know, were, were the people who really drove through. Because a lot of, you know, and some of the early groups for us, for, you know, gay groups, people would invite psychiatrists in to tell us how sick we were. Because, you know, what did they know? Uh, she was overjoyed about how far we have come, but she cautioned against complacency. These things need to be codified into law, she said. And boy, do we talk about that every week. And not only was she a co-founder of Gay Activist Alliance, she was also the co-founder of something called Gay Women's Alternative, which had meetings uh, in the basement of a church on the on Central Park West. I went to some of those meetings in the uh, mid to late 70s. Uh, they were terrific. They were a great place for me to uh, find other women and find a community to begin to uh, put my toe into. She also worked with Tracy Bame, the uh, publisher of Windy City Times, on a terrific biography of Barbara Giddings. She worked at the Oscar Wilde bookstore. Uh, and Frank Rodwell, uh, who you saw in one of those pictures. Yes. Uh, and the quote of hers I like is, I've had a terrific life. It's so much fun. And that's the message I try to give about activism, too. It is so much fun. She was always, she was mostly smiling in those pictures. Yeah. Uh, you saw Frank Kameny, who was one of the organizers of those demonstrations. And we're taping on Wednesday. Well, uh, Google put him up. Uh, it's a picture of a man in Washington, D.C., but if you click on it, it's the entire biography of Frank Kameny online. He was the late gay activist who started his gay work in the late 1950s, make, he, contributing to making the movement more aggressive in the 1960s. And they're both uh, seen in the documentary Cured, which is about that APA uh, fight for taking us out of the... Uh, uh, the uh, Index of Mental Disorders. Thank you. 
<laughs> or maybe I'm developing one. Uh, I'm not sick anymore. <laughs> but Cured, Cured is a terrific documentary that includes both of them. Well, up until then, psychiatrists made a fortune over saying, yeah, I'll fix you. And you were in therapy for the rest of your life. Exactly. All right. All right, so moving on, uh, should we go to Biden and what's going well, on? Well, you want to you want to you want to name a couple of other people too? Sure. Yeah, in Maryland, trans activist and a very accomplished businesswoman named Sharon Brackett has died at just the age of fifty nine in Baltimore of heart disease. She played a lead role in persuading the Maryland legislature to pass trans rights legislation in 2014. She started five companies over the past 20 years and was named by the Maryland Department of Commerce as one of Maryland's top women in tech. Um, she experienced discrimination in the business world and thus became an advocate, co-founding Gender Rights Maryland and served on the board there from 2011 till her passing. Um, she co-chaired the National LGBTQ task forces, creating change conference in Baltimore in 2012. And she served on the boards of the Point Foundation, OutServe, co-founded Transparent Day in 2018. Uh, she was the first trans person elected to political office in Maryland, the Baltimore City uh, Democratic State Central Committee. Uh, she's survived by her partner, Sarah Law, and a son, Stephen, and a daughter, Jess. Big loss. And we also mourn the death of Jeffrey Sanker uh, on the West Coast. Uh, he created the white party circuit parties in Palm Springs that would draw 30,000 people, uh, huge celebrations of uh, pride and gay men and uh, uh, sexuality. He died of liver cancer at age 65. Right. Okay, so uh, President Biden, he did proclaim indeed. Um, well, of course, you know, by the way. Wait, uh, what, let's, I'm sorry, we have another uh, to talk about. Rusty Warren, right. who, uh, like uh, uh, Kayla Husen, died at age 91. <laughs> Rusty Warren, <laughs> she was very out in her New York Times obituary. I'm not sure how out she was in life. But she was a very well-known, very risque comedian and singer. Uh, she started off as a singer, but uh, she would tell a lot of jokes between songs and found she was getting a great reaction to them, especially because they were quite risque. And so she started uh, moving into more of the comedy than the singing, although she still sang. This is uh, one of her more famous uh, productions, a song called Knockers Up. <laughs> and the and the album title uh and it's exactly what you think it is and that was uh, kind of the level of her humor in my uh, youth they used to call them blue comics now they just call them comics well i think she was uh risque in a in an almost family friendly way not in a sort of uh cheap tawdry way if you get the distinction, but uh, I'm sorry she was a little before my time. I would like to have uh, known her work better. Rusty Warren. And I don't want to go into talking about federal stuff without acknowledging what we're all staring at and trying to stop uh, our democracy, such as it is being dismantled state by state. That's been happening all over the country. Uh, the U.S. Senate won't pass the voting rights bills because they won't get rid of the filibuster. Uh, so, you know, partly because Manchin and Cinema won't help with that. And uh, it's also the reason that we cannot get a vote on the Senate, uh, in the Senate, on the Equality Act, which was already passed by the House. So what do we get? Proclamations for pride from President Biden, which we do appreciate. He issued that. He called on Americans to recognize our achievements and celebrate the great diversity of the American people and to wave their flags of pride on high. Uh, <laughs> we're going to link to the whole thing in our email, but I was most struck by the fact that he says in the proclamation, 14% of his 1,500 agency appointees identify as LGBTQ. And he talked about solidarity with the community, which was nice to hear. Uh, and uh, and solidarity with the community includes flying uh, rainbow flags at embassies around the world. And there was a particular one that caught our eye this week. Uh, that is flying uh, from the U.S. Embassy to the Holy See in the Vatican. 
it's it's, it's quite a, a statement, and we're going to tell you more about the Pope later. Oh. Also, also in Washington, uh, Corinne Jean Pierre became the first LGBTQ woman to lead a White House press conference, and only the second black woman to do so. Uh, the first LGBTQ person was Deputy White House Press Secretary Eric Schultz, Schultz, excuse me, under Obama in 2014. Yeah, and I love seeing Corrine because uh, she's adorable. Uh, also in uh, federal news, the U.S. Navy uh, led a little tour of the USNS Harvey Milk ship under construction. They say it's 60 percent done. They expect to launch it in November. They took some uh, officials in San Diego and uh, gay leaders around to take a look at it. Um, and uh, Nicole Murray Ramirez, who's a longtime gay activist and leader in California, said it's gorgeous if you like Navy ships mm. and and probably the first ship ever dedicated to Harvey Milk as someone who received a less than honorable discharge from the Navy. That's pretty stunning. Um, in news of uh, guest co-hosts for Gay USA, uh, Amy Cooper, who called the cops on our Chris Cooper, no relation, a year ago in Central Park when he told her to put her dog on a leash, now is suing her employer, Franklin Templeton, for race and sex discrimination for firing her, even though she acknowledged what she did as a misdeed at the, at right after the event uh, that could have gotten Chris killed. Uh, she also didn't pay a criminal penalty other than five mandatory therapy sessions. Well, we can see how much effect they had. Uh, it, it's really, it's so rich that she's doing this race discrimination. Uh, I think she's got herself a lawyer who is just uh, out for blood and is trying to turn this into whatever he can to right. to get stuff for her. It's really it's disheartening would be a vast understatement. Well, speaking of uh, disheartening, let's talk about what happened in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Mm that we learned about this week. We're going to show you a, a video report from the local news, but it's about uh, Layla Leslie, an 18-year-old lesbian who was murdered on May 28th at her girlfriend's house. It looks as if the girlfriend's father did the killing. It looks like it that way and took his own life and that of his wife uh, and injuring his, uh, his own daughter, who was Layla's girlfriend. So here's the report. Nearly 24 hours after Windsor Locks police were called to this home on Lowndes Drive, they're still here trying to piece together the final moments of 18-year-old Lauren Layla Leslie's life. She, along with two other people, killed shortly before one this morning. Another person is fighting for their life while another person was left unharmed. Police believe the suspect is among the dead. I'm going to miss her. I love her so much. I just can't believe this is happening. Like, this is just a nightmare. Hearts break in the Leslie home. Layla's brothers mourning the tragic, senseless loss of their sister, who just last year graduated from Bloomfield High. She's a proud black lesbian woman. And I feel like it's not fair that she had to go through this. Layla's family tells Eyewitness News the 18-year-old was studying to be a physical therapist and had been dating her girlfriend for about a year. So it's very difficult for me to know that now her being her true self and living in her her reality. This is the result of that in my eyes. Police haven't commented about a motive, nor have they released the identities of the victims. Right now, the Leslie's are left to deal with their reality, which is now missing this young woman who had her whole life in front of her. This is my family, and we raised her from a baby, from a baby. My mom is in a hospital because she couldn't even take this right now. This is insane, and, and I'm not going to see her ever again. I have to live in a reality where this is no longer, this is this is my new reality. Uh, well, horrible. horrible, horrible. But uh, really, thank you to uh, her brother uh, for, for affirming her in all her reality. That was very moving. Very. Right. Uh, you know, tragic. All right. Also, uh, we're under attack all over the country still with these uh, laws state by state. 
in uh, West Virginia, uh, the ACLU and a, an 11-year-old uh, trans girl, Becky Pepper Jackson, have filed a challenge to the no trans girls in sports uh, law passed in West Virginia. Uh, Becky is an 11 year old cross country runner. Uh, so she is not sitting still for this uh, at 11. In, and, el in elementary school, she was a member of the cheer team for the local youth football league, no problem. She wanted to try out for the cross country team in middle school, but she's now gonna have to go to court to win that right. In Florida, Governor DeSantis has also signed a no trans girls in sport, school sports law. Uh, HRC has promised to sue on that. Uh, he attached the bill at the last minute to a charter school bill. I mean, Governor DeSantis is in the Republican sweepstakes to see who can sink the lowest to either get the you know re Republican nomination in 2024 uh, or be Trump's vice president, best presidential nominee. Although he can't run with Trump because they both live in the same state. Um, anyway, uh, it was disgusting. At the at the press conference, he had his little daughter, who looked to be about five years old, sitting there at the desk with him. I hope she grows up to be LGBTQ, uh, or at least an ally against her father. He signed it at a Christian school. Uh, now, Biden, a Biden executive order bans discrimination again on the basis of gender identity under Title IX. So that's one of the ways we're going to be challenging these things. In Louisiana, we're waiting to see what happens because the legislature has passed an anti-trans uh, in sports, school sports bill. The governor uh, has promised to veto it, but we've been led down this garden path before. So I'll believe the veto when I. And there's a new report from the Daily Beast that I just saw uh, that details all the right wing millions and millions of dollars that are going uh, unseen uh, under the radar into these campaigns uh, to promote these bills. Uh, Joe Manchin, you wonder why he's a little soft on the Equality Act or, or voting uh, rights? Because he's getting calls a thousand to one uh, against us in his office because the right wing is financing these campaigns. Uh, the Chick-fil-A guy, Dan Cathy, who promised he was no longer funding anti-LGBT stuff. He's pouring millions into this. Betsy DeVos, uh, your lovely former Secretary of Education, millions into this campaign to the National Christian Charitable Foundation, which is promoting all these phone calls, all these, these threats to legislators. You wonder why a bill, the Equality Act, with 70% approval across the country can't get passed? Because the right wing is relentlessly threatening these people. Well, but you're telling me that uh, he's getting, you know, these thousands of calls. Where are our calls? Where, where What are we generating on this? Uh, I think when we feel we're in the right, when we see we have 70% report support, we get, uh, you know, apathetic on this stuff. We don't see the need to make thousands of calls. Kayla Houston said, don't be complacent. You've got a code of law. And that means people have to get angrier. I mean, you know, you know, we're all having fights over cops and, and pride parades, but I mean, let's get really angry about and this and get these things done. All right. Uh, Strip. Disturbing story from Illinois, a 25-year-old trans man, we have a picture of him, Haven Bailey, he was shot to death May 24th in a confrontation with police. He was carrying a pellet gun, allegedly ignored police orders to drop it. This is in Villa Park. Uh, someone had called 911 and reported a person with a gun at 2 a.m. Uh, Bailey walked toward a cop and the cop shot him four times, claiming he feared for his life. There's speculation about suicide by cop, but we don't know. He loved fishing, he loved Pokemon. Uh, he seemed to be a gentle, happy guy, but now he's gone at uh, age 25. Now we're still trying to sort out, the, uh, I at least am still trying to figure out who to vote for, for mayor and all the other offices where we get to rank people here in New York. 
Well, the Jim Owls Liberal Democratic Club, an LGBTQ club, rescinded their endorsement of the leftist in the race, Diane Morales, whose campaign has labor trouble, and endorsed Maya Wiley, who you may know from MSNBC. And if you think it's easy to rank five mayoral candidates, it is not, and I haven't made up my mind, I'm not going to announce anything. You know, we are not shy about our opinions, but we do not have firm opinions in this race at all. And primary is June 22nd. My ballot is sitting on my desk. <laughs> oh, you have a ballot. Oh, yeah. uh, Absolutely, our, all the time. I'm, I'm elderly. Well, uh, for those of you who don't have ballots on your desks, uh, early voting starts June 12th, and uh, our early voting place is in Hudson Yards. <laughs> Dubai by the sea, by the Hudson rather. Yeah. Well, right. let's go to, as long as we're talking about things like that, let's go to these pride parades. Uh, I see that uh, Denver's pride has banned uniformed cops from their pride parade. That's interesting. Uh, and I'm disappointed that Mayor de Blasio here in New York is very upset that the Pride Parade has banned uh, cops or uniforms. Because they haven't banned cops. And once you tell people uh, the gay officers action league could march with its banner with identifiable symbols in, the, in that parade, I don't think that's the view of uh, Reclaim Pride. But, but uh, I, I think our uh, attitude is uh, we'd rather not have them. But if they show up and they want to march and they're just wearing their gold T-shirts or something, no one's going to kick them out. So it's not, you know, people aren't trying to be anti-cop, but cops in uniform carry guns. And, and there are a lot of people, and this is especially being brought to our attention by people of color who suffer disproportionately from police abuse. And as I said in the New York Times, I hear a lot of white whining about this, you know, and people aren't listening uh, to what people of color are saying and about their experiences with this. And that's, uh, I am anti those cop actions. Uh, so I don't have any hesitation about saying that. Uh, Roxanne Gay, uh, black lesbian, uh, very well-known columnist for the New York Times and author, wrote a terrific piece that ran this uh, weekend in the New York Times. Look that up. Cops uh, don't belong in pride. Right. We will link to it in our email. If you want to be on our email list to get these extras, uh, go to gayusatv.org, sign up for our email list. You'll get a weekly email. You'll get something from GoDaddy saying, do you want to be on the list? Uh, you know, on that same homepage, if you'd like to make a pride donation to Gay USA, you can do so. We would appreciate it. Uh, uh, well, I, appreciate, I appreciate what Roxanne wrote because I thought it was really right on the point. But I was horrified to see that 95% at least of the comments uh, from readers were negative and said, I, <laughs> I commented, uh, True. by the way, Andre Thomas, we, he's the co-chair of HOP, who resigned when a membership meeting over ban on cops and then was restored by the executive committee. He's back as co-chair, uh, just keeping you up to date. Uh, HOP is only doing virtual events this year. Well, they're going to have a little presence in the streets. I talked to uh, the mayor's office yesterday. Uh, they may have a float or two. I was not happy to hear that. And a few people marching with them, but they're going to do a little presence in the streets, ending up at their office on Christopher and Greenwich at 3 p.m. But we're all going to be in the Queer Liberation March in New York. Uh, this is uh, organized through Reclaim Pride, which Ann is very active with. And we're going to meet in Bryant Park, which is right behind the public library on 41st Street at 6th Avenue. We're going to gather there at 2.30, kick off at 3, march down 6th Avenue. 7th, 7th Avenue. We go with the traffic down 7th Avenue to Sheridan Square, past the Stonewall, and east to Washington Square Park. We will have a rally and gathering in Washington Square Park. Everybody will hang out. Then we'll see whether the uh, city is really closing the park at 10 p.m. as they currently. And don't forget do. the Dyke March on Saturday, June 26th, a protest, not a parade, 5 to 8 p.m., also meeting in Bryant Park and going down and, Fifth Avenue. And the Drag March on Friday evening, going in reverse chronological order, meeting in Tompkins Square Park, what, around 7, 8, something like that. 
And in, and in, and in other uh, rainbow flag news, and Moses Lake, Washington, a boat uh, were harassing an LGBTQ vacationers who were flying rainbow flags from their boat. And they had their own boat catch fire and explode, the, the harassers. And they had to be rescued by the gay boaters. A video <laughs> on TikTok of the incident went by. Would the would the harassers have rescued the gay boaters? I would uh, guess not. But what do I know? A couple of other notes like this uh, in Boston on June 12th, there's going to be an alternative trans resistance march and vigil for tr black trans lives. And that has been, is now being joined by the by GLAD, the GLBTQ legal advocates and defenders, the great legal group. Uh, they're joining. Uh, uh, black trans leaders uh, and ex-volunteers from the main march in a boycott of the regular Boston Pride, which has an all-white board of directors. Strange. And, in, uh, and uh, I have to, I have to give one corporate. Uh, I, I don't even want to say shout out, but I'll just say a little note. Nordstrom's. For Pride is giving a uh, hundred thousand dollars to trans organizations to finance hormone therapy for uh, people transitioning. Uh, Seventy-five percent of them to BIPOC people, and a total of three hundred and fifty thousand dollars overall to trans people for Pride. And of course, if we had universal health care, we wouldn't have to uh, take take crumbs from Nordstrom. Although I appreciate what they're uh, doing in the meantime. I'm also reminded here that I have a note to myself that I mispronounced something last week. Uh, the name of a town in or Oregon, which I'm told is Jervis, not Gervais. It's, not, it's kind of spelled like Ricky Gervais, isn't it? It is, but it's pronounced Jervis. Uh, uh -huh. Also, applause to Donna Brazil for finally quitting Fox News. She yeah, is. One, one, <laughs> uh, what's his name? The other guy? So uh, yes. Uh, well, Donna has noticed that Fox is uh, pro-Trump and uh, <laughs> anti-BLM. She's been taken in by ABC, apparently. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and thank you to Michael Cohen, the former Trump lawyer, who points out that Trump doesn't care about LGBT people. He does. He hates us. And, and New York City, if you are in town, the Stonewall Inn is going to have, a, has un, already unveiled an exhibition of pride flags organized by Gilbert, the Gilbert Baker Foundation. Uh, it contains historical info on the various flags and it continues until June 29th. You know, Andre Thomas was on the radio talking about all the white anger against, uh, you know, getting cops out of the parade. He said the same thing happened when you know, we added some stripes to the to the uh, rainbow flag. People said, oh, not a black black stripe or a brown stripe, you know, this or a transgender stripe. But, you know, come on, folks, we're all of this together. What do you care? Uh, in Wisconsin, Governor Tony Evers, and I do know that is the correct pronunciation, uh, has issued some executive orders, one to have the pride flag, I'm not sure which version, fly over the Capitol uh, for the entire month of June. Uh, he has ordered state agencies to use gender neutral language wherever possible, wipe out, uh, you know, gender specific pronouns and no public funds for conversion therapy. Because the legislature uh, will not act on a bill to because the legislature is still in Republican hands. In Texas, a management services firm, Braidwood, says that they're Christian and they want the right to discriminate against LGBTQ people, or at least bisexuals, they said in this thing. Uh, please, uh, they're seeking to overturn the EEOC interpretation of Title VII that the Supreme Court accepted in the Bostock decision. Uh, so they're setting up all these rules and, and in every one of them, they say, male or female may enter a gay bar or a bathhouse. And it goes on and on and on like that. And they're, they're in court in Texas where they expect to win. Uh, this is their attempt to avoid violating laws against sex discrimination. Uh, in uh, Defiance, Ohio, at Defiance Middle School, Tristan Torres, 14 years old, 
wore a rainbow flag uh, to school to just be proud of who he is as an out gay uh, kid. And he was beaten, choked, drenched with water while a, a whole gang of people watched and videoed the whole thing. Uh, the American people aren't there yet. The new Gallup poll shows, it does show 66% support for trans troops, which is down slightly from 2019 from 71%. But most say that trans athletes should play on teams that match their birth gender, 62% to 34%. Half of young adults know someone who is trans versus 31% of all Americans. We have more education to do. Yeah. All right, can we move to international news? Yes, uh, the, uh, the Russians have warned Disney that the short gay-themed film Out, it's called Out on the Disney Plus streaming service, denies family values and promotes non-traditional sexual relationships and is thus uh, uh, against a Russian law. Uh, out is nine minutes long. It's about Greg trying to come to terms, uh, come out to his family, and then magically swaps minds with his dog, Jim. And Greg and his boyfriend, Manuel, kiss in the film. It was shortlisted for Oscar. It's the first Pixar film to feature a gay main character. Nice. In Lithuania, the parliament, by a vote of 65 to 63, very close, uh, is refusing to debate same-sex civil partnerships. So that's not going to happen. But in Israel, uh, Tel Aviv will let all cohabiting couples, same-sex and opposite sex, register their couplehood and their living together situation so that they are eligible for municipal services like uh, registering for education or uh, parking or discounts. Well, you know, cities like New York did that in the 1990s under David Dinkins, you know, establish a domestic partner registry, start giving benefits. In oh, uh, they should just legalize same-sex marriage. Yes. Uh, yes. And the, well, mayor, the mayor of Tel Aviv said that. Yeah. Uh, the, the Back to the Holy See, to the Vatican, the Pope changed canon law to make the ordination of women a grave crime, <laughs> right up there, he said, with child abuse and possession of child pornography. Oh. Yeah, they've somehow, uh, the news headlines seem to say that this is about uh, criminalizing uh, child molestation and, uh, and child porn. But what they've done is put it in the same category as ordaining women, but what, what confuses me is uh, that they now criminalize this. What is the Vatican doing in terms of criminal punishments? They're not sending people to jail uh, and they're not even requiring that this molestation or anything be reported to uh, official authorities like police departments. I think they do have a jail there. Well, they probably, I'm sure they do, but I don't think that's what they're using it for. There's a jail in the basement of the Capitol building in Washington, too. I've been in that jail. <laughs> and and one of my favorite moments on the Dick Cavett show is when, uh, 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 what's his name, Reed, the, uh, 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 my old boyfriend, uh, the uh, movie critic. Oh, Rex Reed. Rex Reed, thank you. Reed and I didn't want to do that. Rex Reed talked about being arrested in Bloomingdale's and taken to Bloomingdale's jail in the basement of the department store. <laughs> I think it was for shoplifting. Anyway, so the, uh, so the Vatican is still screwing around inappropriately, but the uh, is to find them by flying the rainbow flag. Meanwhile, uh, the right-wing Republicans in Congress are still behind this bill to uh, forbid the flying of rainbow flags or Black Lives Matter flags or anything other than the Star Spangled Banner or a military flag at an embassy. So this is the Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates crowd. Uh, they don't have a lot of co-sponsors, uh, but Marjorie's referring to these as hate America flags. Somebody sent uh, Matt Gates a picture and said, this is my dad during World War II, could you please Tweet this. It was Lee Harvey Oswald in the service. He, he retweeted it. Uh, news. Uh, let's get in news of coming out internationally. New Zealand's 
first Olympic diver in 37 years is out and proud Anton Down Jenkins, 21 years old. We got a picture of him. Grateful to have grown up with LGBTQ representation in the sport. Tom Daly, of course, in the United Kingdom, and a multi-Olympic medalist who was a multi-Olympic medalist, and Matthew Mitchum of Australia, who won- How soon, how soon we forget Greg Louganis. Right, oh, absolutely. Uh, Down Jenkins qualified on the three meter springboard. He, di he dives for University of North Carolina, and he made the games despite a bout with COVID that set his training back two and a half months. He's 21, he's too young to remember Greg Luganus, but it, uh, it gave me a little pang of uh, heartburn to think that poor Greg Luganus was not on that list. Right. Uh, all right, AIDS news? Well, uh, Visual AIDS is having an exhibit, Comic Velocity, HIV and AIDS in Comics, uh, June 11th through July 11th at PS122 at 150 First Avenue in the East Village. The picture there is by Howard Cruz, it's called Safe Sex from 1983. And we have another one by Michael Slocum called Xander Alexander in 1994. Let me you? read this because I like this so much. Uh, the title is, We Negotiated Our Sexual Practices. Yes, it is perfectly safe to lick the in inside or of each other's ears. Are we absolutely sure about this? But otherwise, we never spoke about AIDS. There you are. Uh, also featured in the exhibit will be drawings by Alison Bechtel, David Wanyarovich, Carlos Sanchez Becerra, and some newly commissioned comics. Did we say PS122 Gallery at 151st Avenue? I did, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was too busy right. reading the captions. Right. 9th Street. And the uh, International AIDS Conference in 2022 will be held in Montreal in person. Wow. All right. Yeah. Entertainment news? Yep. So. Uh, uh, just a, a program note, first of all, that uh, the last episode of Pose is going to air this Sunday uh, at 10 p.m. on Fox uh, or FX, uh, excuse me, FX. Uh, I've been following this season's uh, shows. It's ending too soon, too soon. So the Tony Awards are now going to be presented on September 20th than a back to Broadway special, but only best musical, best play, and best revival of a play. The rest of it's gonna be streamed someplace. And uh, a lot of gay LGBTQ content in the, in the nominees. Did you see that Vanessa Redgrave has withdrawn from the Kevin Spacey film? Directed by her husband. husband. Uh, yes. Uh, Frank O'Neill. Yes, uh, she says, I have nothing to do with it. They, they, they were together for a long time. They met in Camelot back in 67, but didn't marry until 2006. But she's not doing anything with Kevin Spacey. Yeah, some of you uh, may have followed the first season of Betty on HBO about uh, young girl skateboarders. It's kind of a funky uh, series. Season two starts next Friday, June 11th on HBO, Betty. Well, and then, on Rugrats, a character named Betty uh, has been confirmed as a lesbian. She is the mom of Phil and Lil on the Paramount Plus series. She's Morales, who came out in 2017 as queer, uh, who Natalie said, anyone who watched the show may have had an inkling that he was a member of the Alphabet Mafia. That's a new <laughs> phrase on me. Had you heard that one before? The Alphabet Mafia? I don't think so, but maybe. I don't know. Uh, and uh, speaking of LGBTQ, the Teletubbies, you remember them. Uh, they are now selling LGBTQ merchandise, uh, as is uh, Blue's Clues and you and uh, Madagascar. It's all LGBTQ. Harry Falwell was right. He condemned the Teletubbies back in the day as an entree to homosexuality. <laughs> Don't you remember that? I, of course I do. What do you think I am? Uh, uh, congratulations to Katie Sowers, the football coach who was with the San Francisco 49ers and has now been hired by the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, she's going to coach uh, uh, summer practice and the preseason games in a sort of tryout capacity, but uh, she's doing great. And uh, 
uh, we're happy for Katie Sowers. And I finally got to the Alice Neal art exhibit, People Come First at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's really unmissable. Uh, she was born in 1900 and lived into her 80s. Uh, she portrayed average people, activists, and some of the artists of her time. That picture, which is the poster for the thing, is a gay couple. She met at a, she was making a presentation. She said, come on over to my place, boys, and I'll paint your picture. And this was in the 19, 1978. Um, that's called Jeffrey Hendricks and Brian. Uh, I left this exhibit, and it's got f fantastic portraits. Uh, looking at people on the subway and people on the street, everybody looks like an Alice Neal portrait to me now. Uh, she was just unbelievably good. Uh, well, I'm not sure I can say this is unbelievably good, but judge for yourself, Lance Loud uh, of the American Family, uh, famous first reality show with his PBS, fans, PBS uh, around the early 70s, well, part of his thing on the show was that he had a band, uh, which was first called Loud and then was called The Mumps. They are finally, 50 years later, releasing music by The Mumps. Uh, this is the first release. Uh, it's on the 20th anniversary of his death. Uh, so if you're interested in Lance Loud's music, it's sort of punkish, but I think uh, sort of gentle punkish. Uh, you can look for that. You were making me think of an early gay musical I saw at uh, Judson Church called uh, The Fag by Al Carmine. So it was the minister there and yep. it was gay. It yep. was David Summers was in it, who became a famous AIDS activist. Uh, it was terrific. And I kept asking for years, when are they going to release this album? And they never did. Well, then you can get the mumps doing the mumps. it. <laughs> uh, thank you to Mel Reed, a uh, pro golfer who will be playing in the U.S. Open this weekend wearing a rainbow symbol on her hat. Pega is a uh, uh, Pega Systems is a corporation that makes software, uh, but they are sponsoring her and, and she's an out lesbian. We covered her coming out in the last couple of years and uh, she won her first tournament uh, last year. Everybody thrilled with that. And so she'll be sporting a rainbow at the U.S. Women's Open this weekend in San Francisco. What course are they playing? Olympic. Oh, boy. Uh, we'll we send this in our email as well. Rufus Wainwright has released his rendition of Over the Rainbow from his Carnegie Hall concert of Judy Garland songs as recorded at Capitol Studios. Uh, we're going to link to that. It's a soulful rendition. And I'm very happy to see that Jazz Jennings, after taking a couple of years off to sort of recalibrate her mental health like Naomi Osaka is going to do a seventh season of I Am Jazz. Uh, she was such a groundbreaker and pioneer uh, for trans kids and uh, I'm thrilled she'll be coming back. Much to be proud of. We hope you're all having a wonderful LGBTQ Pride Month. We hope we get through this month and we hope the country gets through the year. And we will see you next week. Thank you.